What's going on guys? My name is Rob Aration, and today we're going to be looking at the Monoprice MP Select Mini 3D printer. This printer is something that I find overlooked a lot. This printer is not something that a lot of people know about. But for its price point, it sells for just around $200. The feature set that you get with this printer is something that I have not seen with really any other printers at this price range. And the quality of prints that you get is superior to a lot of its competitors. So let's start off with basic specs. So the printer has a print area of about 4.7 inches or 122 or 120 millimeters if you're using the metric system. So 4.7 by 4.7 by 4.7. It's a, it's a basically a, a cube uh, print area and you can print with either PLA, ABS or another any other filament type. One of the nice things about this printer is that you do not have to use proprietary filament. In a lot of other printers in this uh, really sub $400 price range, uh, you're going to find proprietary filament. You have to buy from the company that makes the printer. With this specific printer, with the Monoprice MP Select, you can use whatever filament you want. Right now, I am actually just using uh, some Hatchbox PLA filament. Um, now, a couple things to note here with that filament. Uh, I find PLA prints really, really well on this printer. ABS, uh, there's a little bit of trouble uh, with the temps for the heated bed. Now this printer actually has a heated bed, which a lot of printers in this price range don't even have, uh, but the max temperature on that heated bed uh, is advertised at 60 degrees Celsius, but you can push it up to 80. But I still find uh, that really, even at that max temperature, uh, sometimes the ABS just doesn't stick to the printing surface uh, and I've tried replacing the tape for the printer bed and sometimes uh, you can get a perfect print with ABS other times uh, depending on the complexity of the print just that starting layer can pose a little bit of a problem so even if you preheat um, you'd want to probably watch that first f uh, those first few minutes if you're printing with ABS uh, you know before you leave the room or do something else while you're printing with PLA, I've really had no problems. And what I've found is that you can compare the print quality of this printer with PLA filament to some thousand dollar printers. Uh, if you look at some of the more expensive printers that are technically not in this printer class, this printer has some superior printing quality. And I've been very impressed with the overall capabilities of this unit. Now, as far as the actual temperature capabilities of this printer goes, um, you can get the printer bed, as I mentioned, up to 80 degrees Celsius. Uh, you can get the actual print head up to, or the extruder, up to 250 degrees Celsius. Now for PLA, the optimal temperature for that extruder is going to be around 200, 205 degrees Celsius. I normally go on the higher end there. Uh, now, for ABS, though, you want to be between maybe 210, 240. Uh, I normally go up towards that higher 240 number. So if you're printing with ABS, uh, you shouldn't really have any problem with the extruder. Uh, and considering the fact that other printers don't even have a heated bed to begin with, uh, it's not that big of a loss to have a bit of an issue with the temperatures on the heated bed. Uh, but I would probably stick to PLA unless you really need something super strong just because that extra temperature sometimes isn't all the way there. Uh, this is a single extruder printer and you can print with an SD card or micro SD card. You can just stick in the side right here. Uh, although I just tend to print directly uh, with the cable, USB cable right over from my computer. Um, I use Cura, but you can also use Repetier Host. Uh, Cura is just my personal preference. Uh, I, I like the user interface of that one a little bit better. You can print uh, over Wi-Fi, but uh, I didn't. I was not a huge fan of uh, the software options available for Wi-Fi printing. Uh, Repetier Host is the main one you'd use for Wi-Fi printing, but again, Cura doesn't allow me to Wi-Fi print to this printer, so I just stick with the USB cable. And that's not a problem for me because I keep my printer in the same room as my main desktop. Uh, but if you're going to be using this printer in a room other than your main work area. Uh, for example, if you'd like to put it in a workshop area in your house or garage or something like that, and you want to be able to Wi-Fi print, uh, then I would just make sure that you're familiar with Repetier Host. 
uh, and that you're okay, or that you check out uh, using an SD card. Max printing speeds on this printer, uh, you can push it up to 55 millimeters a second. Uh, that's the max printing speed advertised. Uh, I prefer to stick uh, maybe a 1.3 multiplier on the standard speed, which is about 22, 23 millimeters a second. Uh, I find that to give the best quality print results, but I understand if you're going to be printing something that's going to take 12, 15 hours to print, uh, you might want to speed that up a little bit. Uh, I, you can speed up the print in Cura, but I have found that sometimes the printer doesn't always translate that speed. So even if you set a uh, two times speed multiplier in Cura, the printer might not adjust its speed. So you may still have to use the built-in menu to change the speed. The pr printer has a built-in uh, wide angle LCD display. Uh, it is not a touch screen, however, so you're going to have to use this wheel. Uh, now, when you're actually using the display, you have several menu options to choose from. First option uh, is not available right now because I don't have an SD card in the printer. The second option allows you to preheat uh, and adjust temperatures before you send something to the printer. If you're printing over USB or Wi-Fi, uh, you're not going to really want to worry about this menu. If you're using Cura, it will automatically start the preheat process, which you will actually have to cancel in order to get to the print screen. Uh, just a little bit of a bug there, but you will have to go into temperatures after you've sent your design to the printer, hit cancel preheat, and then it'll bring up the printer, the print screen where you can actually print and adjust the temperatures of your design. So just something to note there, if you're using the micro SD card, you can just do print preheat and then you can print yourself manually. The third screen here is the movement screen. In the move menu, you can adjust the X, Y, and Z axis location. Uh, this is helpful if you're trying to calibrate when you first take the printer out of the box and you want to get that bed just right and level. Uh, you might have, want to lift up or move uh, the bed or the extruder. One of the other things you can do here is just reset it to the home location. So if you're going to be putting it back in the box, uh, that's an easy to hit button. And the extruder movement actually allows you to move the filament either in or out. So if you have just put a new reel of filament on the printer, the extruder setting on this move menu will allow you to feed it in uh, after you have set it to the correct temperature so you can at least get the beginning out before you run a print so that everything's clean. So if you're new to 3D printing or you want to get into 3D printing uh, or even if you already have a 3D printer and you want another printer for some smaller projects, I would definitely recommend that you consider the Monoprice Select Mini. Uh, this printer has really blown me away with the features that it packs in at this price point. And if you're going to be printing with ABS, I would just think for a minute and figure out how precise and how complex the designs that you're going to be using for ABS are. And if you really need uh, that extra heat from a heated bed, the MP Select might not be the printer for you. Uh, but if you're going to be using PLA and sometimes ABS, then there is really no question that at this price point, this printer is one of the best ones I've seen so far. So I'll be dropping a link to this printer in the description below. Uh, if you like this video, uh, please leave a like. Comment down below and let me know what you think of this printer. And if you have any questions, I'll try to get to all of them. Uh, and remember to subscribe so you can see new videos as soon as they come out. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.